To demonstrate this lighting technique, I'm gonna use this simple object I created in Blender a while ago. So it's basically a perfume bottle. Uh, so yeah, let's first of all let's switch to front view, and then I'm gonna add a plane, change alignment to view. So maybe I'll enter edit mode and make it slightly smaller like this, and I'm behind the object like that. And then again, I'm gonna enter edit mode U to unwrap it. And now let's set up the, uh, let's actually add a new window. Switch to shader editor here and to get rid of this menu on the side. Then I'm gonna switch to material preview mode and click new to add a new material to this plane. So I'm gonna delete the principal BSDF shader here, shift A, and I'm gonna add an emission node, connect it to material output, and then I'm gonna add, let me see, gradient, gradient texture. And this one I'm gonna connect it to a mission node, so, and we see the result. Uh, but instead of linear, I'm gonna choose spherical, so we have kind of this type of gradient. And then I'm gonna choose gradient texture, hit Ctrl T on a keyboard to add a mapping and texture coordinate nodes. So, I'm gonna choose UV here, and then uh, it's possible to adjust the size of this gradient using the scale option like this, but instead of doing that, um, I'm gonna switch to UV editor, hit tab, and then I'm gonna select this UV, and I will try to increase it like this, and I'm gonna put it somewhere in the, in the center. Probably like that. All right, and then I'm going back to shader editor and then I can adjust the scale and it will adjust it along the Y axis. All right, so let's just leave it as a default. Let's set it to one. Uh, and now let's actually add a camera to the, to this scene. So shift A camera and I'm going to reset all the settings gy to move it away from the object and then i'm going to rotate it along x and let's switch resolution to like 1500 and maybe like this it's actually supposed to be vice versa like that mm. all right so now let's open 3d viewport hit zero on an ampad to enter to a uh, camera mode and now let me adjust the focal length. I'm gonna set, let's try 80 millimeters. And then I'm gonna move it away from the object like this. And by the way, if you wanna give your um, your render kind of hero look, if you just simply rotate the camera along the X, it will look like this. Uh, let me actually get a bit closer to the object. Uh, so yeah, if we use focal length 80 millimeters, it kind of looks fine when you rotate the camera like that. Uh, we do not see any sort of uh, huge perspective issues with that, but if let's say we use 45 millimeters camera and the camera is being much closer to the object like that, then if we'll try to rotate it, we will see it doesn't look right since the, uh, the perspective is really distorted, like uh, this line is supposed to be parallel to each other, right? So if you want to use wide angle camera and at the same time has a correct perspective, um, basically what you can do, just select your camera. I'm gonna put 90 degrees here like this. And then I'm going to camera properties and then there is a shift option. So I'm gonna shift focal plane along Y axis like this, you see, and then this way we correct the uh we have the perspective in a correct way all right so but don't go too far if you're gonna look like if you're gonna make like this and then i'm gonna move my camera lower you see that the object will be squashed along the z and that's not what we want so don't go for like really extreme values i'm just gonna set it to like that and put my camera higher like this maybe even higher and then shift the plane slightly. That's a pretty neat feature. Keep this in mind, all right? 
And let me actually set focal length back to 80 millimeters. All right, and my cap away from the object like this. Uh, maybe slightly lower. Zero here. Uh, actually, no, let's use shift as well. So the focal plane looks like this. If I put zero here, the camera would be pointed straight along the along the Y. So adjust it slightly. Uh, like that. Alright, so now let's switch to render mode here and I'm gonna choose cycles. Uh, 120 128 will be enough. And uh, let's choose GPU, like 500 from max samples. All right, so uh, let's choose to render mode here. And as you can see, that's the lighting setup we have for now. And uh, if I go to world properties, and as you can see, there is a grayish color as a background. So I'm just gonna put zero here. So this won't affect my object in any way. And uh, by the way, let's just choose this area to be rendered like that. All right. So, and I actually want to create more interesting pattern for the for the liquid and for the transparent parts of this bottle, for the cap, and for some shiny parts. Talking about this part and this label. All right. So, and to do that, I'm going to choose the plane here and let maximize this window. Like this, I'm gonna switch to shader editor here. By the way, we can adjust the intensity of this gradient using strength option here. We can make it invisible, make it brighter like that. Uh, but basically, I wanna make this, uh, I'm gonna make this gradient much, much smaller. So to do that, I'm gonna choose uh, mapping node here. And I'm going to select all the axes here and hold shift and move it to the right to make it much smaller like that. All right. So, and by the way, I want to add a color ramp node in between emission and gradient texture nodes. And I'm going to switch from linear to is. This will give us smoother uh, transition between light and dark parts of this gradient, right? So let me switch back to camera. And now I'm going to go to object properties, uh, visibility tab, turn off camera checkbox here. So this plane won't be visible for the cam. As you can see, this part is now hidden. That's what I want. And basically now I will try to create the uh, the lighting setup for the liquid and the transparent parts of this of this bottle, and probably I want to make this even smaller like that. And also we can this uh, we can move this gradient on the plane using the location option, right and left, up and down, this. So. I will try to build the lighting stamp from the bottom to the top, like that. Alright, so uh, to do that, just put these guys like this. We also can control the intensity of this gradient using color ramp node. I'm gonna choose uh, this right, this guy on the right, click here and decrease the intensity like this. Basically, I just choose some grayish color to reduce the intensity of that, right? So, and also maybe I wanna I wanna scale it along the x probably, y, like this, and move it a bit lower, like maybe like that. All right, looks cool. So, uh, what if you want to add more gradients on the plane? And it's actually pretty easy to do. I'm going to reorganize my notes a bit. So basically, I'm going to choose these notes, Shift D to duplicate it, move it slightly lower, and then I'm going to add a mixed color note here, connect it, and then I'm going to connect this color ramp to 
be input here. Uh, nothing has changed at the first glance, but if we will adjust mapping node, I'm talking about the second group of the nodes, so we can also select this, hit Control J to combine these nodes, and same here, slightly lower like this, and then if I adjust the location of these new groups and I move it slightly higher along the Y, you see that the there is a new spot on this plane. And I'm gonna move it here maybe. And we also can play with the scale of this guy. Make it probably a bit higher like this. And maybe I'm gonna increase the intensity. Let me see. I'm gonna make it a bit brighter like that. Maybe all the way up. That still looks cool. And also we can actually adjust the... Of course we can adjust the overall brightness of uh, each of each gradient using the emission node. Increase it like that. So consider these color ramps as uh, kind of more more subtle instruments to affect your affect the brightness of or the light spots. It's also possible to add as many um, as many notes as you want. I mean, as any spot as you want on the plane. So for that, I'm just gonna to duplicate this mix node, Shift D, and also I'm gonna select these nodes, Shift D to duplicate it, and then let's move it slightly lower like this, and I'm gonna move this guy lower, and I'm just connect color ramp to this mix mix note like that and uh, if you take a look here I will just change the location like that and I'm gonna adjust the scale of this guy maybe I will make it like that and move it slightly higher like this and now you see this part is affecting the cap of the bottle and that's what I actually want. Let's try to... Uh, let me see. Let's try to... Maybe make it even bigger along the X. Maybe I'm gonna put it... Somewhere here and let's try to adjust the scale along Y. So yeah, maybe like this. I, I quite like this pattern on the on the cap since we have uh, some sort of gradients on both sides of the cap and a bright spot on the top. And this part of the of the perfume bottle is reflecting some light as well and it looks cool and by the way guys if you want to take a closer look to this note setup feel free to download my file uh, on the Gum gumroad page uh, the link is in the description so yeah feel free to check it and use it and you can even use it in your own projects and commercial projects or whatever and don't forget to send me a link to your works as well we can also create some lighting setup for the label and uh, this shiny part of the bottle as well. So let's just, I'm gonna switch to front view, plane, change the alignment to view, gonna make it way lower like this. And let me see, gonna move it away from the bottle, put it slightly higher like that, GY. And maybe I'm gonna select this plane again. And let me see, I'm gonna copy these nodes. I'm gonna select this plane again, Control V, Control V to duplicate it. Let's try again, Control C, Control V. And let's delete principal BSDF shader. I'm gonna add a mission node and I'm gonna connect, connect everything. So tap U to unwrap. And I'm gonna slightly 
adjust this to UV editor, scale, and right in the center. Let's, by the way, set scale to one and something like that. Right, looks cool. So let's go to object properties and make this plane invisible for the camera. Into camera view again, so we see that, turn it on and off. We see that this part of the bottle is getting some light. So I'll try to make it slightly more interesting. I'll try to put it somewhere here, that. Try to rotate it along the X. And the Z, maybe to get some sort of gradation. Let's increase intensity to like three, five, something like that. Let's try to put it closer to the bottle like this. And also, as you can see, this part of the perfume is getting some highlights as well. Let's get rid of this annotation and Actually, maybe I want to put it slightly lower than this. I don't want to have too much contrast for the label. And then I'm going to duplicate this plane, Shift D on right click to remain it in the same position. Then G, Shift Z, R, Z to move it on the axis. And then I'm going to decrease the size that. And probably some. close to the bottle. I'm gonna have some nice highlights and maybe on the other side just shift D to duplicate it, R to rotate it and then same thing for, the, for this part. Just make sure that this plane doesn't touch the, the bottle. So put it higher and fine here. Lower that. Same. You can play the position of those planes as much as you want until you get the result. So I'm pretty happy with this one. Certain things can be adjusted in Photoshop later. So I think this is a pretty good start. And uh, I really like this method of, uh, of lighting because you can, it, it's really flexible. You can adjust any settings you have. You can add uh, as many spots on the plane as you want. So this is really really flexible workflow in my opinion so i hope you guys learned something new today and uh, if you have any questions please drop them in the comments also please join my facebook group if you want to discuss 3d products or just want to share your works and uh yeah so i'll see you soon